Let's talk about the new Mac Studio with the M2 Max and M2 Ultra from a pro photographer perspective. This is Artist Right. If you have already subscribed to his channel, thank you. If you're new, welcome. Please consider subscribing so that these video would reach a larger audience. Everything that I'm doing for these testing are self-funded. If you find the information I'm sharing with you helpful, I'll leave a link to my tip jar in the description, or you can choose to use YouTube Super Thanks as well. All the funding would go and directly help to support the channel and also in to the funding for future hardware purchases as well. As usual, I'll be sharing with you a lot of information. I highly encourage that you pause the slide so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'll be sharing with you, and there'll be timestamped to various section in the description. With this in mind, we are going to talk about the Pro Desktop Max, and for this, we are going to focus on two machines, the Max Studio, one with the M2 Max and the other one with the M2 Ultra. Both of these are going to be stock configuration from Apple because most of the time we are going to look at stock configuration or use these machines as a starting point for our configuration. I also have a few future machines coming in as well. For example, I have the M2 Ultra base SOC that has been upgraded to 128 gigabytes of memory. We're going to see what improvement are we seeing there. And also the Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra is also coming in as well. I'm out of town right now, as you can see from the setting that is slightly different than my normal studio, but I was able to test those two machines. I want to share the result with you right away. This way you don't have to wait that long if you want to go out and build a machine. Now, I also have another test on the 50 inch MacBook Air that is coming as well so make sure you stay tuned to the channel because there's a lot of information that's going to be coming out. In addition to this, I'll be including some reference system as well to give us a perspective of where we have been and where we are going with all these machine performance. Particularly, I want to point out that on some of the M2 and also some of the M1 Max, Mac Studio results, what you're going to see maybe some previous testing result because those are my client machines and I don't have access to them at the moment. I'm trying to book time with them. Some of them are going to be current. Some of them may not be as current. So I will try to my best to point all those out when we reach those slides. As usual, I can't test every configuration. These are the configuration that I think many of you are going to consider. So this is going to make the most sense. If you want to buy a machine, send it to me for testing for you know a week or so. I would love that. But anyway, these are the configuration. And with these SOC, we have to remember that there are different segmentation. There are more of the consumer leaning one and more of the pro oriented one. We're going to be focusing on the pro oriented SOC today. Now we're going to take this approach from a pro perspective. I am a professional photographer who does video and I go through a lot of raw files from any of my sessions from a corporate shoot to a wedding or just architecture shoot for that matter. And we're going to be taking a look at from that perspective and also, like I said, some video work as well. Now, with that in mind, I'm also doing a lot of these on single app testing because I want to know how the silicon is performing one generation to the next and one silicon to the next. If I start to do multitasking, I start to introduce a lot of variables in the results. So what I like to see is how the silicon is actually performing on the task that matters most to me. And with that in mind, I'm also going to use this term as well that some of the results are going to be based on reference testing, meaning that they're based on previous results. And like I said, I'll try my best to point those out when we reach those. All right. One of the things I also want to share with us as well is this is some thing that I have been sharing since the first generation M1 machine came out already is that we are really lacking optimization. And I'll point this out in some of the apps as well that I have been testing. I mean, it's really interesting the result that for example, a previous version app running on a slightly older operating system, for example, an older dot release tends to perform better than the current one. So there's a lot of optimization issue going on. And even though we have these SOC, I don't think they're really fully optimized just yet. So I want to share that with you. Now, regarding Mac Studio, we're going to quickly go over the design and we're going to quickly talk about the ports. And one of the things that I also want to point out about the Mac Studio is that we do get a few extra ports. This is a nice thing about the Mac Studio. But one of the big thing is a new HDMI on the back has now been upgraded to 2.1 one standard so now it can do 8k 60 hertz and it can also do 4k 240 hertz depending on what you need it support variable refresh rate vrr hdr and also multi-channel audio which is great one thing that's very similar in the max and also the ultra of the previous generation is that the ports in the very front of the max are going to be USB-C, whereas if you upgrade to the Ultra, they're going to be upgraded to Thunderbolt 4. So if you want the fastest performance on all the ports, you have to choose the Ultra. 
And with this in mind, there are some slight differences in thermal configuration and also the weight of the machine, but this has to do with the thermal dissipation of the SOC and I wouldn't worry too much about that. I've also run extensive calibration tests with Palette Master Ultimate and also Calibrite as well. They both work on the Mac Studio with the M2 Max and also M2 Ultra, so we are good to go there. If you get these machines, you'll get good color on day one. Now these are going to be the way how you're going to see the specs coming up on the screen. If you ever wonder, you can always reference back to this. And these are the different abbreviation codes that I'll be using. And with this in mind, I want to quickly talk about SSD. One thing to remember is that the SSD internally to the machine, it's pretty much finite. The moment you configure it, that is going to be just the SSD. There is no way to upgrade it. But the one nice thing about storage in general on the machine is that you can always link up an external storage, whether that be external SSD, hard drive, a DAS, or a NAS to your system. There are so many ways to expand the storage and you're not just stuck with what's in the machine. Now, the one thing I want to point out about these results is that these are the comparison between all the different generations you're seeing right now but I want to really focus on just for example the M1 and M2 generation for the Mac Studio for both the Max and the Ultra. What we can see right now that's very interesting is that the M2 Max generation has a slower SSD speed. Now I say slower this is not really a big issue because you're going to see in these testing that majority of time you're not going to run into an issue and when you do it's not that much worse than the previous generation have come before so i just want to think about that as well and also remember that at 3000 megabytes per second this is more than mighty fast for a majority of tasks that you are going to do on the system with regards to the ultra for both m1 and m2 the performance between different generations are pretty much very similar to each other and if you want to know how fast of an SSD you need for a pro photography and also some video workflow, I'll leave a link to the video that I made in the description. Simply put, majority of SSD will do the job just fine. Now, when it comes to SSD size versus speed, don't go and upgrade the SSD because you want to get the faster speed. Upgrade the SSD because you need more storage. Because even if you have more storage and you're not going to use it anywhere, it's not really going to matter that much in your workflow. And there are better ways to use that money that you would upgrade this to get more speed to get a better performance by, for instance, upgrading the memory. And speaking of memory, this is one of the components that's non-upgradable. So the moment you configure it, this is pretty much going to be finite and there is no way to expand it, unlike the storage in your system where you can link up external SSD memory it's pretty much fixed so really think carefully about what you're going to need my recommendation is to restart your current machine right now if you have a Mac launch activity monitor go to the memory tab and then look at the memory pressure as you're running your creative app throughout the day take a peek if you're in the green you're good if you're in the yellow or the red you might want to consider getting more memory now if you're coming from an Intel machine and only have 16 gigabytes of memory you can see where you are right now. If it's already in the yellow, I might go to 32. If it's definitely in the red, I might actually even go to 64. Those are things to think about. And another thing I want to suggest as well is that I don't really use Activity Monitor as much. I use iStat Menu because it gives me statistics on both the memory pressure, the actual physical memory being used, and it gives me the memory pressure going back 30 days so I can see the performance tracking of my machine. And this gives me a much better result overall. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Now, when it comes to Pro Workflow, I highly recommend getting at least 32 gigabytes of memory. When you're looking at a Mac Studio, it already comes with that anyway. You're going to be fine. However, if you are getting the Mac Mini with the M2 Pro, I highly recommend upgrading because, for instance, if you're running Lightroom Classic, it can start to use up the memory really quickly on the system. And this is just from personal experience of just using it. All right, now let's take a look at the result from Lightroom Classic. This is running on Ventura 13.4, Lightroom Classic version 12.3 and 12.4. Performance are the same between the two. However, I've also gone back and tested 12.1 and 12.2.1 as well because on the M1 Ultra, it does performance. It's just all over the place. There are times where it runs just fine. There are times where it's just really wonky. I even have to go in and do a clean installation on Ventura 13.4 to just verify that what I'm seeing is not the wrong result. These are the result from the machine running at its best. So we can see the two at the very top and this is pretty much how the slides are going to go forward as well is that i'm going to first compare the Mac Studio with the M1 and M2 on the Max SoC and then right at the very bottom you are going to see a result from the Ultra SoC. These are again 1000 Nikon DA50 file. They are the same control group file that I've used in all of my tests, things that I have done on this channel. So with this in mind we are seeing a speed improvement which is really 
nice and when it comes to for example the ultra we're only seeing about an 11 percent improvement but when it comes to the max though this is really impressive we are really seeing that 25 percent improvement that apple of cleaner i'm glad to really see this number now if i add in the result from other machines for example the m2 pro and also the m2 machine you can see how the spread's going right there the m2 pro is running just a touch faster than the m1 max but it's not really by much it's only by like you know maybe a little bit over a minute so it's not really a big deal I would really start to consider if you're doing video or not because if you're doing video max is still going to be the better SOC to go with all right let's take a look at the export result this is again comparing the studio with the max and studio with the ultra between different generations let's rearrange this from fastest to the slowest machine the improvement between the two ultra generation in export tasks is around 16 percent and remember this is a task that uses cpu and gpu also with some ram in combination as well however we are getting close to 25 percent on the max SOC between generation and this is really good to see and in fact it's actually a little bit better than just the M2 and M2 Pro generation as well so I'm really happy to see this number. All right, this is adding result from the Pro and also the M2. You can see how everything cascade down there. Again, M1 Max is trailing just a touch behind, not that much at all, but again, it's something to think about. What is your need and what may be your long-term goal? Again, if you're gonna do video, Max may be the better SOC. All right, let's take a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. This is nine Nikon D810 file merging together, 36 megapixel. With this, the timing between all of these are pretty much within a margin of error of each other, so I'm not even gonna like rearrange ranges and we're just going to move forward to the panorama. This is taking 14 Nikon DA10 36 megapixel file and merging it together to create a 314 megapixel image and it's going to be in DNG. These are our timing between all of it and what we're going to do is rearrange this from the fastest to the slowest machine. Again the two ultra are performing just about the same but what we see is pretty much like the M2 is performing faster than the M1 in this regard and these are numbers that I would say are really great to see that we are seeing a performance improvement from generation to generation especially in the max SOC. Adding the rest of the result from the machine for example the M2 and also the M2 Pro, you see how the result cascading right there. And regarding the result from the M1 Max, this is taking a little bit longer, so I'm going to rerun this test for a future video and see where this comes out. But as of now, this is where the results stand. Now let's take a look at Lightroom. This is running on, again, Ventura 13.4. This is version 6.3. Point one and also version 6.4 as well, which I forgot to put in there. And regarding the result, the performance between these two are just about the same. Again, this is the Max SoC and this is the Ultra, and we are seeing a performance improvement. As far as the improvement go, we are seeing about a 9% on the Ultra and again, a 24% or close to 25% improvement on the Max, which is really great to see. I really want to see the Ultra improve that much more, but the Ultra is already performing at the very top of the heap anyway. And as you're starting to see this result, think about one thing as well is that the M1 Ultra, it's an amazing value machine right now, considering what you can really get nowadays. Okay, with this in mind, I want to share with you one more thing, and this is the wonkiness that I have been seeing in Lightroom Classic, but particularly also in this Lightroom desktop version as well. And these two, for example, this is the M2 Ultra, M1 Ultra, and this is also the M1 Ultra. You may wonder what's the difference. Well, this is version 6.3.1 and also 6.4, performing just about the same. And But this is version 6.1 running on a previous version of Ventura. You can see that at one point I was able to get the export time on the M1 Ultra at 2 minutes 42 seconds. The current version is now exporting this at 4 minutes 8 seconds and I've been noticing a lot of these slowdowns with the Ventura Dot release and also these new app release as well. I'm not sure if you're seeing the same thing or not, let me know in the comments the result that you're seeing but so far all these apps are running slower on the exact same machine which is kind of concerning to me. I mean I don't like my machine running slow but overall we are still seeing a performance improvement from generation to generation when everything is current. Just not a good thing to see that you know the timing is taking a little bit more. Adding the result in from the M2 and the M2 Pro, you can see the result there. And this is also the M1 Max. Now, if I've gone in and retest the M1 Max because things are running a little bit slower, I'm sure that these two machines are probably going to trail behind the M2 Pro as well. But as of now, these are the result, and these have an asterisk on them because they are previous reference results, just to share that information right away. Now, let's take a look at Capture One. This is running on 13.4 again. 
Capture One 23 version 16.2.13. And with Capture One, there's a lot of improvement in speed that they have gone in. So these are comparing the two silicons, the Max and the Ultra, and this one is again on the reference speed. Now, with this in mind, I'm gonna rearrange this from the fastest to the slowest machine. Uh, interestingly enough, the M2 Max is actually running faster than the M2 Ultra. So this also is the same message I've been giving with Capture One for a long time, that if this is your primary program, and you just use this most of the time and you're not using any Lightroom at all, and then I wouldn't even bother going to configure your machine with Ultra because it's really not necessary and Capture One can't even utilize the processes or the extra resources that are available in the system. And you're going to see this result as well on the export. But so far what we are seeing between the different Ultra generations is that we're seeing only a 6% improvement, not much at all, considering it has double the amount of CPU, GPU core in the system, we're not really seeing that scale up. Now, the other thing I also want to point out as well is that in this version of Capture One, they have gone in and improved the import speed from the previous generation by quite a bit. So the current generation, this is one at the top, the previous generation is one below, and running it on the same machine, we are seeing an 18% improvement. This would be great if all of Lightroom products was this way too, but finally Capture One actually is coming up to like the challenge a little bit and improving the speed. All right, here's the result from all the other machines and these two at the bottom are reference value. We can, you can kind of see so far the way how they are cascading out. All right, let's take a look at Capture One Export. For this one, again, this is the reference result and you can see the export time. I mean, they're performing just about the same, but this one has way more GPUs on the very bottom, 48 and 60 double what was here in the M2 Max and it doesn't make that much of a difference at all. In fact, it takes a little bit longer on this one. So this just really goes to tell you that if you're really configuring your machine for a Capture One, and even if you're looking at a desktop machine, Max is good, but just the Max with the base SOC. And based on what we're seeing so far, you're gonna see in, a, in another slide that the Pro may just work well as well. However, when it comes to export, because this is utilizing a lot of GPU, it's not going to be the best. Now we're seeing the timing right now. All these are clustered just at about the same. This is the reason why I'm saying that just simply go for the Max base SOC with the lowest amount of GPU possible and you're going to be good. Adding the result in for the rest of the machine, I mean, like I said, M2 Pro is no slouch. It's pretty much closely behind, and the M2 is taking that much longer. Again, when it comes to Capture One, Max is going to be the best SOC. All right, let's now move on to Photoshop. With this in mind, I'm using Digital Lloyd Test from Lloyd Chamber. I'll leave a link to his website in the description, and I'm using three of these tests. So now let's take a look at Photoshop speed. Now, what I find interesting here is that the M2 Max is taking a little bit longer, and this chart does make it look drastic, but what you're really seeing right now, this is a time variation of about half a second so it's really not that big of a deal but you do see that you know dramatic difference i wouldn't worry too much about this at all we can't really discern that when it comes to photoshop medium the performance is about the same obviously the m2 are going to be the slowest this is also the reason why i say if you are a pro just simply look for the pro max or ultra machine you're going to get much mileage out of these computers in general and when it comes to photoshop huge this is where we are going to have a lot of discussion because they are performing all differently as you're seeing right now. So I'm gonna rearrange this from the fastest to the slowest machine in a bunch. When it comes to the Ultra, they're performing about the same. When it comes to the Max, well, we start to see some variation and the M2 Max is about 30 seconds behind the M1 Max. And the reason why for this is because the SSD is slightly slower in speed. However, let me also put it this way. Remember though, that even in the test for Photoshop Medium, we're not really seeing that much of a difference and that is a 16 gigabyte Photoshop file. Many of us would not even work with that large of a file. Now, this is 56 gigabyte. This is simply, to put it, double the amount of 32 gigabytes of memory that is available in many of these machines. And that's the reason why things start to really slow down. So if you're constantly working with these large files and you're ordering machine with these base configuration, they're not necessarily the the best match for you. However, if you do have to run these every now and then and you work with some of these large files, the variation is only 30 seconds and is really not the end of the world. What this really tells you is that in these extreme cases, the timing doesn't really show that much of a difference. And in reality, when you really get these machines, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But if you again want to upgrade the SSD to get the higher speed, you can certainly do that. However, if you don't have a utilization for it, it's not necessarily something that I would recommend. And the M2 is the one that comes in right behind. 
Now I want to talk about Final Cut Pro export because it goes into the encoder decoder engine, but I want to quickly point this out that with these M2 generations, there are a different number of encoder decoder that is built in. For example, M2 and M2 Pro is the same. When it comes to M2 Max, Apple have double certain components. For example, when it comes to video encoder engine, Apple have doubled this on the Max and also double the ProRes encoder decoder engine as well. When it comes to the Ultra, they have doubled the decoder. Now you have doubled the encoder. So going to two decoders, four encoders, and also four ProRes engine. And we are really starting to see the performance variation when it comes to the M2 Ultra SoC. All right, let's take a look at the result. This is really cool. So these are the max and these are the ultra result and the ultra result shows a 40% improvement with the double amount of encoder decoder engine coming from the max. This is quite a bit improvement. When it comes to, for example, just like the max alone, it's just 2%, it's really not that big of a deal, but the ultra is showing a huge improvement, which is something that I was hoping to see in the M1 generation, but that's not what we got. So rearranging this from the fastest to the slowest, you can see that it almost cuts the time. It's not quite half, but it's really close to half. And if this is what you do on a day in, day out basis, I would say M2 Ultra is definitely the machine to consider. All right, with this in mind, I'm gonna add in the result from the M2 Pro and also the M2 as well. You can see that those machine does trail behind and you can see where the machine in terms of the encoder and decoder engine start to cluster up, which does make a lot of sense. Let's take a look at HEVC 8-bit. Again, when it comes to the max, we're seeing about a 9% improvement from one generation to next, but with the ultra, we are seeing a 43% improvement. That is a huge improvement. If this is constantly your video workflow, you can export numbers faster and go on to the next project. Or if you make a mistake like I do in some of the edit and you need to re-render video quickly, this would be the way to do it. And this is going to enable you to do that. So this is adding in the result from the M2 and also the M2 Pro. I mean, the performance between these two is just about the same. They're only about two seconds apart. No big deal. I would say this is within the margin of error and everything is clustering up where they belong. But the Ultra is really impressive machine when it comes to this regard. Pro S422, we are seeing an improvement going from the M1 to the M2 generation, 18%, a little bit better number, but we are seeing a larger 31% in the Ultra SoC. And that, again, is all these improvements are really great. From slowest to the fastest, you can see the machine there and feel free to process these. And lastly, I'm adding in a result from the M2 Pro and also the M2 right below as well. These two are performing just about the same. I mean, there's not that much difference at all. You're going to see that there's better performance on the M2 Ultra. And then when it comes to the M2 Max and also the M1 Ultra, performance are really close to each other as you are seeing there. And lastly, many of you have been asking me to do some benchmarking with Adobe After Effects. So here they are. Now, because I don't have a lot of historical results from After Effects because I am just starting this. And by the way, I'm using Adobe Benchmark that they have created. I'll leave a link in the description. You can try this out yourself too. But you can see the way how they are cascading right now. And it really just makes a lot of sense depending on the number of CPU cores you have in your system because this is using multi-frame rendering. But when it's exporting this out in the back end, CPU plays a big role in this regard. And it doesn't really go in and utilize the GPU as much yet. So configuring your machine for more GPU doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I would probably say that if you're configuring, for example, the Ultra SoC, I would just go with just the base Ultra. Either the M1 Ultra or the M2 Ultra is fine. There's really no need for you to go in and upgrade the GPU so that you get those extra cores because, I mean, most of the programs you're seeing right now can't really go in and really utilize that. So some of you are probably wondering, what does this all mean? Well, it just really means a lot of different things for a lot of different group of people. For example, if you're a new purchaser for these machines, if you're coming from a PC or if you're just getting into Mac for the very first time, any of these machines will do the job just fine. But I would start to look at a machine based on the primary task that you do as a creative and go by the result that I'm sharing you to pick the best SOC for your workflow. Now, when it comes to anyone who's doing upgrade, you really need to start to think about this. So if you're upgrading from an Intel machine, any of these machines are going to be fantastic and way faster than your Intel. And I usually say, you know, just run, don't walk to the Apple store to get these machines because you're going to see a significant improvement in terms of just the performance and also heat dissipation which equivocate itself to power consumption as well.
And with that, if you already have the M1 SoC computer, well, it becomes a little bit more of a difficult decision. If you have unlimited funding and you want to have the latest and greatest, upgrade all the way, that's perfectly fine. But if you're really trying to make decisions, should you upgrade to the next generation or not, these are some of the justification. You need more memory because it's finite. You can't expand that. You need to have a larger SSD in your system, for instance. You want more speed. You need to upgrade to a SoC with more CPU, more GPU. Or lastly, a change in modal. Let's say you have a desktop ready or you have a laptop computer and you want to switch those around or get an additional machine to work. Those would be the reasons where upgrade would be totally justifiable. Now here's an upgrade path that I want to share with you. I put the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra in a box there because these are just really new. But I'm also going to say this as well that, for instance, if you have a laptop with the M2 Max, you can simply upgrade to the M1 Ultra desktop and that's going to be a really fantastic machine that's going to bump up the performance by quite a bit. But the way how you would use this chart is simply put yourself onto the SOC that you have. For example, you have the M2, going to the Max would be a good idea, going to the Ultra is a good idea, but if you have the M2 already, well, maybe consider the M1 Ultra because that's going to give you, again, the ultimate performance. And very similarly as well, if you have the M2, going to any of these paths in the M1 is still a valid choice. However, I would probably say maybe look at the Max or maybe look at the Ultra or even you can go linearly based on the M2 generation as well. But there's a lot of upgrade paths that you can choose to get more performance out of the SoC. All right, with this in mind, I also want to give you this food for thought as well. For instance, if you're looking to get the Mac Studio with the M2 Max and you're going to upgrade SoC to the extra GPU core on the system to the 38 GPU from the 30, you're now adding $200. And if you've gone in and upgrade the memory to 64 gigabyte and one terabyte SSD, you are now within a striking distance. We're now looking at, for example, the M1 Ultra that is 3060 so you're looking at around like $260 variation and I would say if you're going to upgrade the max studio that much just simply consider the m1 ultra refer from apple or buy use or something like that because these machines are just amazing configuration and even just whatever apple have already pre-configured stock it's more than what most are going to need. Now looking at this chart right here these are based on a different app and I also have good better or best depending on what you want. Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Pro and 1M2 are going to be fine. When it comes to the better one, I would say the Max and if you want the best performance possible, the Ultra is definitely going to make everything run that much faster. When it comes to Photoshop, I would say that the Pros and the Max are going to do just fine. I would recommend upgrading the memory system because if you start to work in Photoshop file, it can really eat up the memory quickly. When it comes to Capture One, I always recommend Max SoC, but here is the thing. Get the base SoC. Don't upgrade for extra GPU because Capture One, go back and look at my previous video, never utilizes all these extra GPU that are in the system. And when it comes to video workflow, for example, Final Cut and After Effect, if you want the best performance possible, the most ultra performance, I would go with the M2 Ultra. But I'm also going to say that the M1 Ultra is now providing a much better value. And I would say it's definitely much better value than the max generation as well. So the pricing are now close to each other. But if you're going to look out to get one for video workflow, I would probably even skip, for example, the M1 Max and just go with the M2 Max if you want to save a little bit more money. But like I said, if you're looking at the M1 Ultra, like either a used one or a refurbished one from Apple, it is an amazing value. Now, when it comes to RAM minimum, I always recommend 16 for pro workflow, but for, at the optimal, you should think about going 32 because the apps are going to start to utilize that quickly and you have multiple running, it's going to utilize it. SSD, if you can get away with 512 more power to you, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry so much about the speed of it. It's not going to make too much of a difference in real world workflow. However, if you really want the most optimal performance, I recommend getting around a one terabyte because that is still like the good breaking point between capacity, speed, and also pretty much performance in the machine as well and price point. All right, so you may be wondering, what about the more consumer-leaning one, the M1, M2? Well, I actually have an anecdotal story. So I consult with clients and also one of my friends as well who have two working stations. One of them is a primary one. We configured this with the M1 Max, so they're doing a lot of heavy Photoshop work on here. It runs just fine. Now, on the second station, I paired them up with the M1 Mac Mini because they're going to, into more video and the M1 Mac Mini are a highly capable machine and they weren't really planning on doing any type of volume photography or any school photo that requires drop, you know, dropping out the background, working with a lot of PNG. However, 
they recently had an opportunity to do a lot more volume work and they were going into that and the m1 are not really keeping up at all considering all the storage option being the same between these two machines the m1 is significantly slower so for this what we have to do recently about like eight months afterwards is configure a new mac mini with the m2 so let me simply put it this way the anecdotal here is that if you do this for a pro full-time thing don't even think about getting the cons more consumer leaning soc just go in and upgrade to either the pro max or ultra right away because it's definitely going to pay off and you have already seen it in the chart here as well that it is significant less time to get the task done and your experience and what you're really getting from your machine are going to really improve when you go to the pro soc so as I said before, there are no one size fit all for any given budget regarding these machines. The best thing that you can do is look for what you are using in your workflow. What is your primary creative task and configure the machine based upon that. Also keep in mind your secondary one as well. But here's the thing, for example, if you are primary photographer and you may get into the video in the future, I think that even with the base max SOC, you're going to do fine and you can choose with the M1 or M2 generation. But if you want the ultimate performance, I would say, you know, the M1 Ultra is now looking really good as well. So anyway, I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give us a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And I'll be having more videos and more testing coming in the future days and week on this channel as well with all these other machines. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Lastly, an art we trust.